Hello children. This is the second part of electromagnetic effects. Now in this section we will be discussing about a new segment of electromagnetic effects. In the previous section you learned about the forces acting. Now here we will be learning about how EMF is induced. EMF can be induced in wires or in a coil which is moving or which is experiencing a changing magnetic field. So we will be observing how this EMF is induced and what are the theories behind that. Now an EMF can be observed if we move the coil or if we move a magnet. Then we will be finally discussing about the law that concerns about this EMF which is Faraday's law. And finally we will be talking about the Lenz law where everything is trying to oppose what is created. So Having those things in mind, we will continue with our lesson. First of all, Faraday's law. This is the base of this part. Everything hereafter, what you will be hearing, is based on Faraday's law. Faraday said that whenever there is a conductor, if it experiences a Flux, change in flux linkage. If it experiences a change in flux linkage, remember that, okay? Not a constant flux linkage, it must be a change in flux linkage. He said that the rate of change of flux linkage will be directly proportional to induced EMF. So uh, this rate of change of flux linkage we can say in terms of psi over t. I hope you can remember these terms. So as it is related to rate it would be equal to the differentiation d psi over dt. It shows a very small change occurring at a given time. Or however, even if it is a very high change occurring at a very small time. Then this N represents how many wires are experiencing which are connected all together. Okay, however. Then N represents what? How many wires which are connected together are experiencing this change in flux linkage. Let's say if it is a coil n would be representing number of turns. Later on you will see what this n means. And the negative sign means, as I said in objectives, it means the Lenz law. At the end we will see the meaning of that also. So here I will introduce you the equation. The induced EMF is equal to d n psi over dt minus or delta n psi over delta t however they both are talking about a change as we divide it by time it becomes the rate of change now we will observe how a moving wire experiences a changing magnetic flux linkage and what happens when it experiences a change in magnetic flux linkage? Now what you observe there is a center zero galvanometer which is measuring the current. Now when this gentleman pushes or moves the wire in his hand within the 
north pole and south pole the wire is experiencing a change in magnetic flux linkage therefore according to the rate of change of flux linkage an emf is induced across the two ends of that wire as the circuit is complete a current is passing through the circuit hence this ammeter showed us a reading again i will show you i hope you have seen it when this y is moving you can see a small white dot is moving it is zoomed and shown it to you now there is another highlighting part that you have to observe here which is now uh, one time this y is moved down the other time the y is moved up so when the y is moved down this is also happening simultaneously while he is pushing the wire down you see that the current is moving in one direction let's say this side is plus so you can see that the current is about 2.2 milliamperes but when he takes the wire up you have seen that this side is negative the current value will be minus 2.4 like milliamperes now when he moves it towards right it was just plus 2.2 milliampere when he moves it down sorry then when he moves it towards left it became minus 2.4 milliamperes first of all two things have happened here first thing is when he pushed it down current was flowing in one direction when he pushed it pulled it up the current was flowing in the opposite direction so remember that the direction of the movement can reverse the direction of current and the other thing when he pulls pushes it down the current induced was lower when he pulls it up the current induced was greater only one reason can be there when he pushed it down he was pushing it slower so rate of change of flux linkage is lesser when he pulled it up the current is greater so rate of change of flux is greater ah even it went to 2.6 see he pushed it down but pulled it at a greater speed that's why the current became greater when it comes to pulling it up now earlier what we saw was just a wire now we will see about the factors affecting the emf induced in a coil so the only difference in a coil is it doesn't have only one turn wire it's just one because only the wire is there it would have n turns within the magnetic field okay so in addition to the speed of movement which we saw earlier the strength of the magnetic field that is we can replace the magnet with a stronger or weaker magnet and the number of turns in the coil would also affect the emf what are they i told you three things okay so what are those three things first thing the speed of the movement we can't just say speed of the movement so what is your idea how speed is affecting it affects the rate of change of flux linkage then the other thing how strength of magnetic field is affecting 
if you think you will realize that strength of magnetic field is affecting shy hence that also affects the induced emf number of turns it affects n so that also affects emf now we will see how when this magnet approaches now in my earlier video when the wire is moving in a magnet and emf was induced now here i selected this video to show even when a magnet moves an emf can be induced now this north pole is coming towards the wire and then after that the north pole would be moving away from the wire wire in sense a coil And so I hope you saw it when the north pole came towards the wire the current went towards left then the current went the observation of the needle went towards right so when it is moving in now this is a different scenario why now the south pole is moving in south pole is moving out so earlier the needle went first left then right but now the needle went first right then left so this is a very nice thing to understand that is when north pole enters the current is if it is showing that the needle is moving towards left when south pole enters the needle is moving towards right it means that the direction of the current is or can be reversed depending on which pole is entering this has a relation with lenz law we will discuss lenz law a bit later again i'll show now north pole is entering you saw that reading went towards left that means current is moving in one direction again you saw it same thing repetition then what happens is north pole is taken out so the current moves in the opposite direction right and then what happens next is south pole is moved in current moves towards right hand side then the current moves towards left hand side so direction of the current is reversed they are in this section you learned that when north pole is entering current flows in one direction when north pole is leaving current reverses the direction when the south pole is entering it induces a current exactly opposite direction to which when the north pole was entering and when north pole is leaving current went in one direction when south pole is leaving current went in the opposite direction so that gives you an idea how emf across two ends of a coil is induced when there is a relative motion between coil and a permanent magnet why we use the word relative is sometimes the coil can move even the magnet can move right the transformer now we learned that whenever there is earlier we learned that whenever there is a current carrying wire around the current carrying wire a magnetic field is induced around the current carrying wire a magnetic field is induced when the direction of the current carrying wire is changing the induced magnetic field also changes its direction i hope you understood about that again we will see the direction of the current is changing whenever we supply an alternating input so current carrying wire induces a magnetic field 
but when the direction of the current is reversed it changes the direction of magnetic field also that is the most important part when the direction of the magnetic field is reversed see one time it moves this way the other time it moves this way when the direction of the magnetic flux is changed the secondary coil is experiencing a change in magnetic flux that is the most important thing as I said in the beginning so the secondary coil experiences a change in magnetic flux hence it induces an EMF so it induces an EMF across the two ends of the coil according to Faraday's law so then an EMF is induced across the two ends of this coil which we call the secondary coil and hence a current will pass in the complete circuit so here as a summary we learned a very important thing definitely an alternating supply is required it causes a change in magnetic flux linkage to the secondary coil hence an EMF is induced in the secondary coil now the generator generator also the same thing happens only thing is there is a permanent magnet so magnetic field lines are moving from north to south a uniform magnetic field when this part of the wire is moving downwards it experiences a change in flux linkage hence according to Fleming's left hand rule it would observe a current towards this way out of the screen but this wire is moving upward so the force is upward according to Fleming's left hand rule it would experience a current into the screen so Fleming's left hand rule is also involved in this case but remember when it is vertical when this section and this section of the wire is vertical the induced EMF would be minimum because it's sliding in a direction or it's moving in a direction which is parallel to the magnetic field lines when this coil is horizontal then this wire or this wire cuts so many magnetic field lines of flux so rate of change of flux linkage is greater when the coil is horizontal hence the maximum EMF is induced now you would observe how the direction of the current reverses at either side of this wire when it rotates see earlier blue was carrying a current in now it carries a current out uh, so you can see continuously how the direction of the current is reversing as it changes their sides but however it is connected to slip rings so the generated current would be an alternating current okay now we'll observe the lens law now what lens said is something like this i'll give you a basic idea if you create something the created thing will try to stop you from creating it very simple idea that means if a magnetic field is creating a current that current should not produce another magnetic field which will support the previous magnetic field which caused the current okay so now we will observe now, someone can say now the magnetic blue magnetic field lines are the ones that cause the current so according to right hand grip rule when the current is passing this way it will again produce 
another magnetic field in the same direction, clockwise direction. That is completely wrong due to Lenz law. So what Lenz said is, if there is a magnetic field upward, the current induced due to the EMF would produce a magnetic field that would be opposing the magnetic field which created it. Okay? So, if a magnetic field creates a current, the current will induce in a manner that would create another magnetic field which opposes the initial magnetic field which caused it. That is what Lenz said. It may be complex to you a bit, so that's why I made it simpler at the beginning. I'll tell it again. Whenever there is a change in magnetic field causing a current, the newly created current will cause another magnetic field which will oppose the initial magnetic field. That is what Lenz said. That's why earlier you saw North Pole was entering current is moving in one direction. When South Pole is entering current is solarly moving in the opposite direction. When North Pole is leaving, current is moving in the opposite direction. When South Pole is leaving, current is moving opposite to the direction when the North Pole is leaving. So those things were observed because of Lenz law. And that's why this negative sign is available. Okay. Thank you for listening children. I hope you understood about the second part of this lesson.